Hi, we've got with us this week uh, Professor Frank Mark here from Vanguard University, Southern California. Welcome, Frank. Thank you. It's a real pleasure to be here. Well, it's lovely to have you in New Zealand teaching a course for us on the Holy Spirit and leadership. Ah, yes. So we thought we'd take a few minutes just to, to pick your brains a little bit. <laughs> Sounds um, good. Particularly about, um, primarily a course for pastors, for people in ministry, people in leadership, Holy Spirit and leadership. What do you think are some of the, the big themes, ah, perhaps, yes. that, that you want to communicate that they need to know in ministry? Whoa. Yeah, that's right. Uh, in the course, we've been uh, stressing um, various themes related to the Holy Spirit that emerge in the Scriptures. Uh, we start, of course, at the beginning, which is what the Scriptures do, and talk about the Spirit as the Spirit of life that gives, uh, uh, that brings into being all of life and that invigorates uh, all of life and causes all of life to flourish. And so there's a there's a, a basic sort of um, fundamental role for the Spirit in life that we sometimes uh, neglect. Uh, we think of the Holy Spirit solely as a supernatural reality detached from life, and then what what takes place every day around us um, is something that is sort of devoid of the Spirit. And this is clearly not the biblical vision. So one of the things we do in the course is to help the church to realize that all of life is a gift, that gratitude should characterize our daily schedules, our, our daily relationships, that everything that is good, that everything that is wholesome um, brings glory to God. And, and so this, this broad vision of the Spirit's work uh, in the world is where we begin. Uh, and then move from there to talk about how the Spirit gains particular focus in the ministry of Jesus Christ and how in Christ's death and resurrection the Spirit of God shows that God is with us even in death and that the Holy Spirit is pushing beyond natural life to immortality, to uh, the life of sanctification and of hope for uh, life beyond this world uh, in the new creation to come. And so uh, even though the spirit is sort of, um, if you will, uh, uh, fundamentally to be seen as involved in all of life, and yet uh, the spirit is not confined <laughs> to this natural life, mm. but pushes, pushes it in the direction of new creation. Mm. And so there is this emphasis on sanctification and hope and new creation to come that is part of that as well. So these are the kinds of issues that we talk about. And then, of course, within it all, the vital role of the church as both the living sign and instrument of what God is doing in the world uh, by His Spirit in witness to the Son, mm. and the importance of the church at the cutting edge, if you will, of what God wishes to accomplish in the world. Mm in bringing all things to fulfillment. And so these are, in just in broad strokes, mm -hmm. these are the kinds of things that we've been talking about. So a big part of the, the last three days, you've, you've really been emphasizing sanctified embodiment. Yes, that's exactly right. The spiritual life that's is right. making holy and, that, and very right. embodied. And that, that's those, right. those practices have been coming through. I, I love that emphasis. It, 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 I was reading a very intriguing book uh, uh, by Eugene Rogers, in which he asks the question, uh, what does the Spirit do unique, that is unique to the Spirit? What does the, and he asked it in a, in a somewhat humorous way. What does the Spirit do that the Father and the Son uh, can't do just as well? <laughs> and, and his answer is, rest upon creation, sanctifying it as the temple of God's presence in the image of the Son. That, that this is what the Spirit typically does and that is sanctified embodiment. Okay. So Christian leaders are not just uh, about um, helping people better understand the Word of God. They are doing that, but they're not just doing that. Uh, we're, we're not just brains on a stick. We're whole people. Uh, we can't, we're not just called to understand the Word, we're called to embody it. And so the challenge of Christian leadership is to roll up sleeves and get down in there where the people live and actually motivate them, encourage them, help guide them, 
not only in understanding the Word of God, but bringing it, in bringing it into real life, embodying it in relationship to others uh, as a living witness of what God wants to do in all of humanity. Uh, and so it's this sanctified embodiment that really presents Christian leaders with their strongest challenge. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a really great antidote to this rampant Gnosticism. Yes, This, this exactly disembodied, right. secret yeah. sort of society that's that only the, the, the special few. <laughs> so this is, this is great stuff and it's coming that's out right. clearly. Now you've, uh, you've just finished a book on Christology, on oh, Jesus yes. Christ, Jesus yes. the Spirit Baptizer. Yes. And and your next project is one on ecclesiology, That's the church. Right. That's a right. A little bit of a potted summary of the first book and a praise of the next. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, this Christology that I wrote, um, uh, I, I, I tried to take seriously uh, John the Baptist's announcement that the coming Messiah will baptize in the spirit and fire. This introduces Christ in all four Gospels and the Book of Acts, the narrative foundation of the entire New Testament. And yet, when you read books on Christology, it barely gets an honorable mention. And I really believe that Christology has to follow that announcement. But what John himself didn't see is that the Messiah will, will baptize in the spirit of fire. What he meant by that is that out from the Messiah will flow a virtual river of the Spirit <laughs> into which all will be baptized, those who repent, uh, it will be a purgative experience by which they are renewed and brought into the fulfillment of God's promises. But those who refuse to repent, who resist the grace of God, John the Baptist felt, would be consumed as the chaff is, is consumed and the wheat is preserved. Um, but what John didn't see clearly is that the Messiah himself will undergo this baptism before he baptizes others. That he will pass through the fire, and he, but he will do so as the faithful son and the man of the spirit. And he will pass through that fire of his death in order to rise in the fullness of the spirit. And the, the fullness of the spirit in him overflows his life as he imparts the spirit to all flesh and that's what fulfills the promise of the father to creation and so I wrote my Christology to try to construct that kind of narrative mm. to help us to see uh, the story of Jesus uh, as not only a, um, a um, story involving uh, Jesus Christ as the incarnation of the divine son but also a story involving the spirit fundamentally and essentially throughout the entire process and I guess it, it would be true, although I'll, I'll test this, that it's not either just a story about Christ and the Spirit, but in his narrative, we're caught up in union with him. And that's the Which the pushes church. the church. It yeah. pushes yeah. it right into the church. Right. And, uh, uh, and, and that's what I'm really working on now. Right. And that is to look at the church as a gift of the Holy Spirit, hmm. as well as a gift of Jesus Christ and a gift of the Heavenly Father. So the, 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 the pattern I'm following is the typical sort of Eastern pattern that all the operations of God flow from the Father through the mediation of the Son as perfected in the Spirit. And this perfection is the sanctified embodiment. And so I want to see the community of saints as the place where the Spirit is perfected the gift of the Father and the redemptive work of the Son by creating this community that is the embodiment of the Son, sanctified in witness to the Son um, um, as the place where the love of the Father um, is allowed to, 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 through the church, through the ministry of the church and beyond, uh, to do what the Father wills to do in creation and to, in, and to eventually um, turn the creation into a temple of God's presence. And so I, I want to uh, think about the church as um, a, a triune gift mm -hmm. that is from the Father, through the Son, and in the Spirit as the sphere of sanctified embodiment. Brilliant. 
Frank, uh, Professor Mark here, we thank you for um, spending a bit of time with us. Thanks for your blessing us with your presence and your teaching at Kerry oh, Baptist it's College. it's been wonderful. And we look forward to that new book. Thank you. <laughs> I <Thanks>. do too. <laughs>